Joshua chapter 6. We've kind of walking through the book of Joshua. And uh, today's message title is Shout. Everybody say Shout. 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 Uh, I want you just to hold on to your seat because we're, we're going to go somewhere. I'm going to say that we're going for a ride today. And uh, I want to kind of give you a backdrop on what's, what's taking place here. We took a little bit of time in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Uh, but I want to kind of give you a backdrop of the next few chapters so we can get on to chapter 6. Moses has died, and Joshua stands with the people of Israel at the Jordan River. Joshua's taken the place of Moses, and now he's got to lead the children of Israel to a, a new world, a new new way of living, getting, getting, getting past the old and becoming the new. We've been praying, and I've been believing and praying that, that in 2012, God would do a new thing in your heart, in your life. He would do a new thing in my heart, in my life. How many want God to do a new thing in your heart? In your life. And I'm praying that God show us, Lord, what that new thing is and help us to, to find it, Lord. Now, normally the River Jordan is about 100 feet wide, but today the river is at flood stage. And Joshua, the children of Israel, standing at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bank of that river, how would Joshua get the Israelites across that river safely? But God had a plan. Everybody say, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. God had a plan. He himself would lead them across that water. The waters would part. And only the priest, as a priest, uh, would take a step of faith at the river's bank edge. It would, the water wouldn't part until he actually st t took a step into the river, and then they would saw the water start to part. This is a place that they had never been before. A place they had to trust God fully. A place that, that, uh, where God made it safe for them to cross the Jordan. Now Moses, the man uh, who, who speaks to God face to face, is gone. Moses led the people of Israel from bondage to freedom and is no longer there to guide them. So Joshua is called by God to lead these people. Will he honor Moses' legacy? Will he move forward in the way that honors God? And they don't have to wonder very long if he's going to do the right thing because Joshua was God's man. And Joshua, he fulfills the instructions that Moses gave the Israelites for the entrance into the promised land. These are, this is the backdrop I'm giving you up to chapter 6. And he builds an altar of worship. And he prescribes sacrifices. He even copies on stones the laws of Moses. And then before the people, he reads the law. And he emphasizes that, that, that there's both blessings and there's also curses in the law. And with these acts, Joshua honors Moses' direction and God's authority as he leads the people into the future. And so this is all taking place. They've, they've crossed over the, into, the, into the promised land. They've crossed the Jordan. And now they're, they're looking to, to Joshua as leader. And he does all the things that Moses had instructed him to do. And he follows along uh, the, in God's plan the correct way. And now in chapter 5, we see the nation of Israel is celebrating the Passover. And they begin to eat the produce of the land. Now up to this point, they've been getting manna every day. How, how many would you like to have manna every day? I mean, <laughs> this fresh manna from heaven. You know, those guys went through a time when they, did, they got tired of it. And they, they, they wanted to give because God... He, he kind of turned them against the one, something else. Uh, there's a lot of history there. But here they are, no more manna. After all these years, they're actually eating the fruit of the land. And they, they begin to eat something different. No longer needing the manna. We're going to pick it up now in chapter 6. I want you to stand with me, if you will, for the reading of the Word of the Lord. Chapter 6. Now this is a new day for them, a new, new thing that God is doing. And here we are in chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because the Israelites, because of the Israelites. Now there was a fear of the land because people had been hearing about what God was doing with the children of Israel, how He was protecting, how He was helping them to win the battles, and so fears were taking the land, and they were shutting everybody out. So no one went in, or no one came, went out, or no one came in. But the Lord said to Joshua, "See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men." March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound of hear them uh, hear them sound a long blast of the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout, and the wall of the city will collapse, and the people will go up, every man straight in. So Joshua son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and and had seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the people advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. And when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets. And the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. 
And the armed guard uh, marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry to, or do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had, so he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, cir circling it once. And the people returned to the camp and spent the night there. You guys with me, chapter 12, verse 12? You guys with me? Amen. All right. Joshua got up the next morning, and the priest took the ark of the Lord. Seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord, blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. Everybody say six days. Six days. <laughs> on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times. Seven times around when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, Shout for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is in it to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all those who are with her in her house will be spared so, because she had despised. But keep away from the, the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable with destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver, all the gold, and the arcs of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and, and go into His treasury. So when the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. And at the, at the sound of the trumpet, when the people had gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. Everybody said the wall collapsed. The wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in and took the city. The message today is shout. We're going to shout because God is on our side. Amen? Amen. 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 You may be seated if you'd like. <coughs> the walls of Jericho, believe it or not, were understood to be stand about 30 feet high in the air. 30 feet high. And set up on a hill. So it was a huge, awesome sight, the walls of Jericho. To any approaching army, it looked like there was no way you could penetrate that wall. There's no way you could get in. The, to the people of Jericho inside the wall, it was an assurance to them that their city was was uh, was not able to be invaded, and they were they were safe. So they so they fought. But God had a plan. Everybody say God's got a plan. God, God had a plan for the people of Israel that no wall, no obstacle too big can stand in the way when God is at work. I'm telling you this morning, there's no wall in your life that can stand in the way when God's got a plan for your life that God Amen. can't get through. Amen. <laughs> So it's time for us to shout, to just believe God and to shout with a voice of triumph and say, God, I know you're on my side. God, I know you have a plan for my life. You're going to help me to get through this wall in my life. And so I begin to shout and give praise to Him. Shout, because the city of Jericho is a reminder to me this morning of the holiness of God. God is a holy God. Do you agree with me this morning? He's a holy God. Look at Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. He is a holy God. Verse 13, Now when Joshua was, was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and, said, and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? This is before they were, 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 got into the Jericho uh, area. Neither he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servants? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy, and Joshua did so. I don't believe I could ever do anything for God, from, for God without the presence of His Holy Spirit guiding me. Did you hear me this morning? I don't believe we can, we can operate in, 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 in the things of God, do the things of God without the Holy Spirit being our constant God, being our constant friend. Hmm. Because God is a holy God. And those who serve Him, He's called us to be holy. That's right. He's calling us to live in a holy, in a, in a way that's pleasing to Him. Pastor, what does that mean, a holy life? It's, it's, it's a life that's pleasing to God. It's a life that you're saying, God, I'm doing all that I know to do according to Your Word, according to what I'm, being, uh, what, what I'm seeing and witnessing in my spirit, in Your Word, in my prayer time, and what, what pastors say, what, what, what I know people that, that, that love You and know You, how they're living their life. And I'm, I have you know, mentors I look up to, spiritual mentors, spiritual people that, that I know are, are, are walking according to this Word. That, that I know Your Word, Lord. And as, you, as I pursue after Him and I, and I follow after Him and I want His Spirit to be my guide, I want His Holy Spirit to lead me and, and help me to, 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 to do the things that I'm supposed to do with my life. As I honor Him, I'm, I'm striving to be holy. The Bible says, be holy as I am holy. 
I can't be holy in my own strength. I can't be holy according to Steve's barometer of holiness. I have to be holy according to God's barometer of holiness. Amen? I can't be holy according to someone else's standard of holiness. I have to be holy according to God's standard of holiness. And the way that I see, He says He wants me to be holy as He is holy, then I've got to acknowledge Him in all areas of my life and find out that, that, that I'm, I'm pursuing Him with all of my heart. And then trust Him with, with, with those things in my life. Trust Him that He is guiding me. Look at chapter 6, verse 2. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho in your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. And he, and he, and he gives, gives the instruction on how to march around the walls and, and do it the way I said to do it. Follow after me, and I will, I will help you see. Uh, I will help you see the winning side. If God said it, He will do it. And he told, he told Joshua that moment, he said, he said, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. So at that moment, Joshua should have just understood, he, he, he got it in his knower, that if God said it, then God's going to do it. Because up to this point, everything God's told me He was going to do, He's done it. How many can testify this morning that you know that God has, has done some things for you that He said He was going to do? <laughs> he, you know, we're all, we have promises in the Word of God. This, this Word is filled with promises for us. And, 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 and when we live this life for Him, and we put Him first, and we're striving for holiness in our lives, we'll see the answers of the Lord in our lives. We'll see Him doing the things that He said that He would do in His Word. God is faithful to His Word. I'm telling you today that God's Word, what it has to say, is, is true for you and I, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is my Savior. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the way. It's the Word of God. His name is Jesus. He's the Lamb of God. He's our soon coming King. His name is Jesus. I'm telling you today, there's only one, and His name is Jesus. There's only one that can save you. There's only one that can deliver you. There's only one that can set you free. There's only one that can fill that empty place in your life, and His name is Jesus. Mm. He's a righteous branch. He's the morning star. He's the Passover lamb. He's the coming prince. He's a, he's a promised Messiah. He's the Son of God. He's the soon coming King. He is my liberty. He is my supplier. He is my hope. He is my Lord. He is my Master. And His name is Jesus. And He is a holy God. He's a holy God. And when I, when I sing the story of Jericho and the, and the walls come tumbling down, we used to sing that song as a kid. I remember that little nursery song or old Sunday school song that we used to sing. And the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. When I see this story, and I see the holiness of God. And a God that says, I'm going to stick to my word. If I've told you I'm going to do something, you've got to trust it in your knower that I'm a holy God and I'm going to come through with it. If it's in His word, He's going to follow through with it. That's right. God cannot, dis he cannot dis disrespect His word. He cannot disown His own word. And so and he, 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 he had the angels face Joshua. And then he said, he said, he said See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands about to do it, Joshua. You've got to believe. You've got to hold on and trust the holiness of God. The city of Jericho is a reminder of the holiness of God. And also the city of Jericho is a reminder of the power of God. Everybody say power of God. Power. How big is your God? My God big. is an awesome God. There's nothing impossible for my God. And that's what look at with me here in chapter 6 and verse 20. He's an awesome God. He's a powerful God. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. Everybody say shout. shout. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the people had gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so every man charged straight in and took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, many women, young and old, cattle and sheep and donkeys. The city of Jericho, what happened there that day, reminds me of the awesome power of God. I'm so thankful that there's no height nor depth, nor distance that can separate me from the power of God and His love for my life. There's nothing I can do in my life that would separate me so far to where God couldn't love me anymore. To where God couldn't forgive me anymore. Aren't you thankful for the power of God that can reach in and change a life? Listen, see this with me. In Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 30, it says this, Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet, if he is caught... He must pay sevenfold. Let me, did anybody hear that this morning? Yeah. Mm. When the thief is caught, he has, to, he has to repay sevenfold. Listen, I'm exposing a thief today. God recovers stolen property. 
And if the, if the enemy has stole something from your life, if you stole something from, from the, your past, if you stole something from your, from, from, from your heart, from, from your very soul, listen, God recovers stolen property. That's right. I'm so thankful that what, what the devil meant for bad, God will turn it around for my good. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. The thief Hallelujah. doesn't get back sevenfold what he stole. There's power in God. There's the power of God. And the city of Jericho reminds me of the power of God. Romans 8.28 says that, that we know that all things work together for the good of those who love Him who are called according to His purpose. If you love God with all your heart, you're, you're following after Him hard, and you're striving to know Him, listen, He's going to work all things together for your good. He's going to turn it around for your good because He holds on to the, the fact that He is a powerful God. He is a holy God. It's time to march into the enemy's camp and take back what the enemy stole from you. The devil has to pay back sevenfold. And I want to put him on charge that it's payday. Yeah. It's payday for you. It's payday for Coastal Harvest Church. That's right. You're going to see, him, you're going to see God do amazing things in 2012 because it's payday. It's payday. We're looking for God to, to, to do what He wants to do, to have His freedom and liberty. Everyone in this church this morning has a story to tell of God's awesome power working in your life. I know many of your stories. That He saved you. Aren't you thankful that He saved you? That's God's power working in your life. Think about the city of Jericho and what happened with Joshua and the children of Israel. Think about the power of God when they gave a shout. The walls came down. You can say, Lord, when I gave a shout, when I responded to you, and I nailed an altar, and I, I, gave, you, I gave Jesus my heart, and I said, Jesus, be Lord and Savior of my life. The walls that, had, that kept dividing me from God came down at that moment. God forgave me of all of my sins. And God just put those walls down. When, when you shouted, when you, if you, even if it was a whisper, but if it was a shout in your heart, and you looked up to God and said, God, I need you. At that moment, He, he began to destroy those walls in your life. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for that? Yes. That's the power of God. Yes. Changing our lives, changing our course, changing our destiny. And every one of us have a story. He saved me. That's God's power. He pardoned my sin. That's God's power. I'm so thankful that God pardons me of my sin. Only God can do that. That's the power of God. And when I stand before God, my Maker, I'm standing in that court where, where there's a judgment, and He looks at me, He doesn't see my, my sin, He doesn't see my past. All He sees is Jesus, because Jesus is going to come and say, He's one of mine. I already covered Him. I already spoke for Him. I already died for Him. And so when you look at Him, you've got to look at me. When He sees my life, He's going to look at Jesus' life. And he's going to see the blood of Christ covering my life. Aren't you thankful for the power of God, the hardness of our sin? Forgive us of our sin. Pardon us. He sustains me in my faith as I trust in Him. He sustains me in my faith as I trust in Him. That's God's power. Sometimes you just feel so down and beaten and, and discouraged. You don't even feel like you have strength to believe anymore. But somehow something inside of you is the power of God that comes back up and says, You know what? God is my God. I'm going to trust in Him no matter whatever happens in my life. No matter how I feel today, I'm going to trust that God is my God. And that's the power of God to sustain your faith when faith is low and faith is weak. That's the power of God. The power to heal. Aren't you thankful that God has power to heal our bodies? That's the power of God. Power to deliver us. People being delivered from alcohol. People being delivered from drugs. From addictions. From people being a, a, a delivered. That's the power of God. Yes. That's not man's working. That's the power of God. Yes. That's putting our hand in God's hand and saying, God, with your help, you're going to help me get through this. We have a story to share to a lost and hurting world that, that we serve a powerful God. Listen, when people look at your life, let them see a powerful living God. Don't let them see a God that can't, can't do anything for you, that, that can't come through for you, that, that is a weak God. Let them see a powerful God. A God that you say, well, you know, no matter what I've been through, I know God's been with, me, with me right there all along the way. And it may not come turn out the way you want it to at the time you want it, but you know if God's on your side, you say, Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to hold on to you, Lord, because I know that you're, you're my God. You're a powerful God. We have a story to share. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a, a, a risen God. We serve a live God, a now yes. God. And now, not a God that, that, that might be able to do something, but a God that is, there's nothing impossible for Him to do. Amen. So when the Israelites obeyed God's instructions, Joshua and his army, they witnessed a 30-foot wall coming down. Can you imagine 30 feet? 
Think of a basketball goal and stack that up three times. That's how tall that wall was. I don't know how the thickness of it was, but I can imagine that a 30-foot wall had to be a pretty thick wall. And it took no time as they, as they did what God asked them to do. That's an important thing we've got to remember, to do what God asked us to do, to obey, to obey Him, to follow after Him, to know His voice. And they were walking with God. Joshua knew God. And God gave him instructions. He says, I'm going to give you Jericho. Now he already said things. I'm going to give you, I'm going to put it, I'm, you guys are going to, be, you're, going to you're going to have a win here, but you've got to do it my way. You know, that's the problem. I think we have a lot, a lot of us. We want, we want the win, but we don't necessarily want to do it God's way. We want it now, so we want to do it our way. <laughs> <laughs> and then we find out we don't walk around the wall seven, six days and seven days, seven times. We, we ended up doing it for 40 years. Because <laughs> we want to do it our way. Hello? Mm. But here we see a picture of the, the walls of Jericho, 30 feet high, coming down in an instance. Because they did it God's way. They marched around the wall, and we said, we said when, I, when I tell you to shout, I want you to shout on the seventh day. And the, and the children of Israel, I want to rent that DVD when I get to heaven. I'll get the Blu-ray disc and watch it now. And, and then see that. That's an amazing time. When they're, they're there worshiping, the worshipers are out there. I, I can see them beating the tambourines and worshiping and blowing the, the, the trumpets and, and the, the praise team and singing songs. And Robbie's thumping his bass guitar. And all, but they're all just going to town, man, around the walls. So the kids are, are dancing and having. And all of a sudden, he says, Shout now. And everybody shouted. And those walls just began to come down and crumble down all around. And they were able to go and penetrate Jericho. Because they did it God's way. It was the power of God. You witness the walls coming down. What walls do you have in your life this morning? Where do you need to see the power of God working for you? Where do you see, need to see God coming through and knocking the walls down in your life? Maybe it's a matter of obedience in a certain area of your life. Choose today to let God have His way in your life. Learn to do it God's way. Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, do it in my life, God. Any wall in my life, God, I thank You that You've helped me, Father, to follow after You, Lord Jesus. And to do it your way, oh God, and to see those walls come down in my life, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. The holiness of God, the, 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 Jericho, the city of Jericho reminds me of the holiness of God. It reminds me of the power of God. The city of Jericho also is a reminder that nothing is impossible for my God. I said nothing is impossible for my God. No obstacle is too big for my God. One example of how big God is, long before God laid the earth, laid the earth's foundation, He had us in mind. Long, long ago, He decided to adopt us into His family. He thought of everything. He provided everything we could possibly ever need. In other words, God planned for every contingency plan you might ever encounter before the beginning of time. Let me remind us of the simple truth about discerning the will of God and, 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 and seeing God's will done in your life. God wants you to get to where God wants you to go more than you want to get to where God wants you to go. That's how much He loves us. Did you hear me this morning? You want God's will done in your life? You want to see the obstacles come down? Listen, God wants you to get to where God wants you to go more than you want to get to where you want to go. Where God wants you to go. If you keep in step with the Spirit, God is going to make sure you get to where He wants you to go. Did you hear me? Amen. Yeah. If you keep in step with the Spirit, God's going to make sure you get to where He wants you to go. He's always working behind the scenes, engineering circumstances, and, and setting us up to win. God sets us up to win. He sets us up to, 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 to have that abundant life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, to give it more abundantly, right? That's right. So I didn't come to just confuse you and throw you into discord and throw you into distress and throw you into discouragement. He said, no, I've come to give you life. Mm. I've come to give you a, a, a hope for tomorrow. I've come to give you a plan to prosper you. To give you a hope in the future. And if there's walls in your life, there's obstacles in your life, it's time just to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to settle in you, Lord, and I'm going to trust you. Even though there's a 30 foot wall in front of me, I'm going to trust you because you told me way back that you've already given me the victory. You've already, He's already in me. You've already done a work in my heart. I already have the victory. I believe Joshua had to remind himself when he looked up at that wall, and I'm sure there was somebody around him that said, I don't know how we're going to get through that one. I don't, I don't know how we're And they're, they're trying to discourage him. He had to remember that God said, I'm going to give you that already. Mm. I'm already I'm already delivered Jericho into your hands. He said that before all that happened. He said, I, if I said it, I'm going to do it. 
Now, when you gave your heart to Jesus, you came to the, to the cross, and you gave your heart to the Lord, you learned that in this Bible there's promises for you. Amen? Amen. That's right. You learned that, um, maybe you learned a scripture, you started meditating on His Word. You learned that greater is He that is in me than He that is in this world. You learned that, that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And we'll take that word and we'll forget it. We'll lay it down. And then we'll, 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 we'll feel the oppression. We'll feel that 30 foot wall in front of us. And we'll say, oh my Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through that? What, what? And we forget back there where God says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. We forget that, that, that no obstacle formed against you shall prosper. How many of you are reminded this morning that God is with you? God is powerful. He is holy. And He says, nothing is impossible for me. Listen, if you keep in step with the Spirit, God is going to make sure you get to where He wants you to go. I love the Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I believe this is for somebody this morning. It says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In other words, God's prepared in advance for you to do good works. Do you know that? He's already prepared in advance for the good works that He wants you to do and wants you to accomplish. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. So when you find yourself in a challenging circumstance, you need to know that God is ordering your footsteps. God is with you. You, have a, you can have a sense of destiny because you know that God has considered every contingency in your life. He's already, he already mapped it out for you. He always has your best interest at heart. He already knows that He wants you to be on the winning side. He wants you to see the winning finish line. And this sense of destiny to know that, that God, you told me way back there that I'm going to have this city. You told me way back there that greater is you than is it, in me than he is in this world. You told me back there that you caused me to be a winner. You called you caused me to be a more than a conqueror. You told me way back there in your word. I don't have to fear tomorrow. I don't have to fear this wall in front of me. I don't have to fear the obstacle that's placed in front of me. And there's a sense of, of hope. There's a sense of destiny rooted in the sovereignty of God that helps me to pray the unthinkable, that helps me to attempt the impossible. Listen, you can attempt the impossible, you can pray the unthinkable when you remember what God said in His Word, that He's going to cause you to win no matter what. Amen. You can pray the things that seem impossible. You can believe those things that seem far off and, and you know how God's going to accomplish that in your life. You can begin to pray for things. Listen, pray for things that are beyond your own strength. Mm. Dream and hope for things that only God can do through you. Don't do things that are comfortable and pray the, the prayers that you know you can do on your own, but believe God for something supernatural in your life. Lord, I want a new thing in my life. I want you to do a new thing in my heart. You help me to see a new, new walk and, and a closer walk with you, a new thing you want me to do for you. What is it, God, you want me to do? God, show me, show me how to keep in step with your spirit. It's a good place to start this morning. Psalms chapter 1, verse 3 says this. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever He does prospers. Whatever He does prospers. Thank you, Lord, for Your Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. <laughs> That's God's Word for God's people. I love this Word. So as a church... We need to find ways to spend time with God in prayer together. Every time we come, how, Lord, how can we spend more time in prayer together? How can we spend more time in, individually together in prayer? Because I want to be a pastor that will be proactive in making sure that this congregation, that we're doing everything we can do to stay in step with the Spirit of God. That we're, that we're doing all we can do to stay in step with the Spirit of God. That we'll follow hard after Him. The same should be true for you. If you're seeking God's will for your life, Make sure you are keeping in step with the Spirit of God. Spend time in prayer with Him. Spend time in knowing Him. Listen, Psalm 46, if you'll listen in with me right here. God is our refuge and our strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Rivers come from God. God is our refuge and our help. God is a powerful God. He is a sovereign God. Trust in the Lord. Anxious in time of drought, we are still blessed and we're still yielding fruit. We've got to trust in the Lord. 
God may, may have a bigger scope of, uh, of, of, of what He wants to do in your life than you, than you have even prayed for. Pray beyond uh, what you can do in your own power, your own strength. Impossible odds set the stage for amazing miracles. Impossible odds set the stage for amazing miracles. I'm so thankful that the Coastal Harvest Church we're in our 10th year of ministry this year. Amen. Can we just thank God for that right now? Thank you. <laughs> God has done some amazing things in our church. But I tell you, there, there were days where it seemed like there was a 30-foot wall in front of us. Hello? And it, it, took, it took us digging in and spending time in prayer and saying, God, what is your will for this ministry? What is your will for this church? What is your will, God, for, for the next step for us? How, how are we going to get through this wall? How are we going to afford that, that facility? How are we going to be able to do this and God somehow helped us to see that He was with us. And if He was with us, who could be against us? And through our obedience to Him and our trust in Him, He showed us His favor. And we're able to celebrate 10 years this year. January, this month, at our first service 10 years ago. What about you in your life? Are there things you can look back on and say, God, I thank You that even though it was hard to believe, it was hard to, to push through that time of my life. I thank you that you gave me faith enough that sustained me to where I could see the walls coming down. And I could see the other side. I could see the walls come down and I can look back now and say, Lord, you were faithful then in that situation. I know you can be faithful now in this situation. Have you lived a spiritual journey that long to order to see that happen in your life? To where you know that God answers prayer, that He's faithful. Why can't we trust Him again? Mm -hmm. The reality is that nothing is too difficult for our God. And sometimes we need to be like Joshua and the Israelites and begin just to shout with the voice of praise and thanksgiving. There's many things I pray for, but, but uh, in most, uh, probably every situation I pray for, I give God thanks in advance for the answer. I learn to praise Him in advance for the answer. And even though I may not see it come to fruition right away, it may, it may take several years, it may take several several months, it may take several weeks, however long it takes, but I'm going to give Him praise in advance for the answer to prayer. That's right. Amen? Amen. I'll just share a brief testimony. I, I had two back surgeries uh, about in the last uh, seven years. But up to that point, I went 15 years with no surgery. And, and when the doctor saw my, my disc, he said, I don't know how you lived uh, a day in that situation. He, he said, that was one of the worst I've ever seen in a long time. But I went 15 years. And I remember there was times um, leaving worship on the platform, and, and, and I was in so much pain I could barely walk, you know, just, just pushing through it. And then there was times where I said, God, I need you to touch my life, touch my back. And I, and I know God touched me and brought healing. There was, there, was a, there was a span of several years where I had no pain, where God just touched my life and, and touched my back and brought healing. But then, then, then silly me, thinking that I was invincible, trying to lift some things I shouldn't try to lift. And when you do more than you should do, um, something happens. And I, I injure myself again. But God brought healing in that situation and through doctors and through rest and rehabilitation. And so I thank God today I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. But that was a process of several years. And I thank God today I, I can walk and, and move and do. And, and I have to kind of watch what I lift. But I thank God that I don't live in pain like I used to. Amen. And that's just a testimony to me that, that God was faithful. Even though all those years I went through all that pain, it took a long time to bring healing to where I'm at today. But God is faithful. And I put that in His hand. And I thank Him for sustaining my health. That I, have to, I can walk and, and, and do the things I can do without pain in my legs and my back. There are situations in your life you can look back on and you say, God, thank you. It may not have taken years. Maybe it took a little while. Maybe you haven't seen the answer to prayer yet. But we, it's important that we give God praise before we see the answer. And I believe that's really the instance here that, that the walls of Jericho that God was teaching the Israelites. He said, I want you to praise me before you see the miracle. I want you to praise and, and believe and trust before you see the miracle. Before you see the walls come down. If you need a miracle situation, we, we or, so begin to pray, God, I need you to do a miracle in my life. And say, and say, Lord, here I am, God. Here I am today, Lord. I'm a humble person. We're humble people. I'm not afraid to face 
the giant to look at him in the face and say, the battle is the Lord's. That's me, Lord. I, I'm, like, I'm like little David, Father, in, in, in the wilderness. It says, that, you know, that's a bear and a lion, but, but the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know what laws you have in your life today, but can we all stand right now in, in this place and just, and just, and just we're going to come to a place of worship again? But I want you to just bow your heads and close your eyes and say, Lord, here I am today, God. Here I am, Lord, right there. You know, I need you to do a miracle in my life today, Lord. You can take the impossible situations in my life and you can turn them into possibilities. Lord, give me your mind on my situation, Lord. Help me to see Lord, your mind in this 30-foot wall that's in front of me today, Lord. Help me to see your will, your purpose in my life. Perhaps you're facing a giant today, a wall in your life, and you're not sure how it's going to turn out. I want you to know something this morning. God does know how it's going to turn out. He does know your situation. He does see your life. He does see that, that wall. And he, he says, there's nothing impossible for me. There's nothing impossible for, for me. So, Lord, I'm going to say right now, as I stand in this place, God, and as I put my, my focus on you today, Lord, I'm going to say, Lord, you see the wall of my life. You see the circumstances in my life, Lord, and I'm going to trust in you, God. I'm going to trust in you, Lord God, to, and as Joshua and the children of Israel begin to shout and begin to dance and begin to march, Lord, so that's all the walls come down. So I put my faith in you, in you, Lord God, put my hand in your hand, oh God. I'm going to see the walls begin to crumble around me, Lord. And see your, your will be done in my life. Your plan be sustained in my life, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Right now, just begin to pray all around this room. And say, God, be God in my situation, Lord. Lord, be God in this wall in my life, Lord. I put it before you, God. Lord, I look to you, Father, for the answer, Lord Jesus. I'm nothing without you, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now for everyone in this congregation, God. Lord, there might be someone here today that has a wall in their life that seems Lord, impassable. It seems impenetrable, Lord. I can't see the, the see the wall come down, Father. They're hitting it every day, Lord. I just pray right now that you help them to see your love for them, God, your power for them, Lord. The holiness of God will take precedence over that situation right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, right now, God. Lord, that no weapon forms against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want Mary Alice to lead us in the song. I want us just to lift our hands and lift our voices. Be begin to declare that God is God. That He has a plan and a destiny for my life. There's no wall, no circumstance too big for my God this morning. There's nothing impossible for Him. Well, thank you, Lord.